If King's Fall was that good of a raid, then what could possibly top it? What could possibly take everything that made Destiny Raid special and add on to the formula? What could master the recipe of Destiny Raids while also satisfying the Destiny community's craving for a new experience? New atmosphere, new loot, new encounter design, something completely fresh? Let me introduce you to the raid that did it all. The masterpiece of Destiny. The raid that perfected Destiny. Wrath of the Machine. And this time, with a fallen army. It is time to avenge my brothers and sisters. Stand with me, Guardian. Prove yourself worthy, and the Iron Lords will rise again. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. Let's be sure to say a big thank you to today's sponsor who made this video possible today and has supported me previously, Ridge Wallet. Ridge is for people like me who want a sleek, industrial, and light wallet that fits in their front pocket nicely instead of getting stabbed when you sit on your back pocket. And it won't weigh down your pockets either. Here's just some interesting points with this wallet, so you may want to consider it. It holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles too. Each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty so you could buy this one wallet and carry it for the rest of your life. And, if you're still not sure, Ridge has over 30,000 5-star reviews that you can check out using ridge.com slash evan or code evan at checkout. The link will be in the description. And if you don't like your wallet, Ridge will let you test drive it for 45 days with a full guaranteed refund. Thank you so much to Ridge for supporting the content and sponsoring today's video, and enjoy the rest of the video. A whole lot of rating is to ensue. Rise of Iron. A DLC focused on the story of Siva and the Fallen was a great look into a vital portion of Destiny's world, the Iron Banner. A 6v6 player versus player arena with new exclusive rewards almost every iteration and filled to the brim with character was and is a huge portion of Endgame in Destiny PvP. But we didn't know the story of the activity that we played. Iron Lords, whose names are forever a part of the guns we use, the armor we wear, didn't really have a story filled in. So this DLC looked to answer that unsolved question. The question of why, 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 why? The most important question, and the one that we need an answer to, to discover the meaning of what this activity was all about, to make this world feel alive complete. So, Rise of Iron's storyline was about a few characters fighting something greater than themselves. This was called Siva. Siva was like a Spider-Man Venom that was created by Braytech, a company in the game that made Exos like Cade 6 and the AI Warmind Rasputin. Now, Braytech has their own story with some shady steps along the way, but Siva was something the Iron Lords tried to take control of and use for humanity's survival. Siva, as we knew back then, had gotten out of control from Rasputin and was running wild, killing everything on sight. Rasputin alerted the Iron Lords about the disturbance, and as a result, most of them died to Siva's grasp. The Fallen would then take control of Siva many years later and bend it to their will instead of having to hoard their own ether to start growing, like how Fallen naturally do. And basically that is the main plot. We kill a perfected Sepix, visit the Plaguelands to gather info, go down into the old bunker where Siva was, and kill Siva guardians like Felwinter and the tomb blows up. Well, of course, we know that years later in Destiny 2, we would find out that we were lied to about the reason the Iron Lords died. This, of course, was Felwinter's lie, and Felwinter turned out to be the Exo son of Rasputin, who was originally made to spy on humanity to learn weaknesses, but then was killed by Rasputin, and then revived 
turned against Rasputin, and Rasputin had the Iron Lords baited into the bunker, and Rasputin used Siva to kill the Iron Lords, including its own son. Crazy ending to that storyline, right? Well, just like the Iron Lords, the small development team at Bungie was faced with incredible odds, as this was a small team working on this DLC, faced against the SIVA-like expectations of the Destiny community after coming off of the Taken King. This was also to be the last DLC Bungie was ever going to release for Destiny 1, and would try to wrap everything in a nice bow while the rest of Bungie developed Destiny 2. So, how was the DLC then? New exotics, strikes, PvP, artifact mods that actually do something, and finally, the raid. Wrath of the Machine. A raid that was constructed by a small team, but to me is Destiny at its absolute best. So let's find out why it's a masterpiece. Let's find out why it perfected Destiny. The story of the world's first, the hard mode story, the loot, and the reason why people still play this one at a very high level to this day, including challenges nobody thought were even possible. Without further ado, let's meet Wrath of the Machine. The Iron Lord's legacy is secure. Time to think of your own. History is watching, Guardian. Uh, you can do damage, you can do damage, 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 damage him, damage him! Before we get to this moment, we have to take you back. <laughs> Why are we here? In King's Fall. Who is this man with the dreads, and why does he look so familiar? That guy right there is Tifu. Yes, the Fortnite god and once Destiny hardcore player was a part of Team Redeem, a clan that we have already made a video about previously. This footage is from Redeem's second place King's Fall hard mode finish and an absolute loss in their eyes as it was first or nothing for the team. We know from the other video that Redeem would merge with Hidden Machine and pick up some great players including Destiny's best statistician, Error. With Hidden Machine's players acquired, Redeem was ready to compete in this upcoming race. Our former World's First team was also hungry as hell for another run as Team Rare Drop won another belt on their shoulders. Math Glass was also hungry after not being able to snag a World's First since Atheon and Vault of Glass, and Tier 1 was ultra prepared for the race and strapped to fight. The Legend himself wanted in this battle too, and finally Invigorate, who just stopped competing. They kind of ended after King's Fall. Those were your most notorious teams racing in this one, and this raid had a couple of controversies off the bat that I could remember. Number one, a trailer before the raid which showed an encounter from the raid. This may come as a surprise, and why is that a controversy? Well, raids are very secretive and sacred in Destiny so showing footage beforehand was off-putting since it could be seen as an advantage going into the raid. But number two, and probably the most important controversy, was the leveling of this raid. Just like King's Fall, you could overlevel on day one and be prepared for this raid from running strikes and min-maxing gear to farming exotics for three of coin high-level drops. It's all fair game of course, and nobody should feel bad about being as high of a level as possible going into a raid on day one, but being overleveled can take away some of the excitement of overcoming tremendous day one odds. Tier 1 was really the only team to be super overleveled on day one, at around 385 plus on average light level, with most other teams going in at about around 365 to 380. The raid kicked off just three days after the Rise of Iron expansion, just like how King's Fall did the year before. But players were ready for this one, and understood infusion and leveling process better. 
especially since Bungie made infusing weapons not on a calculator anymore, but a one-to-one -one infusion so players could take one item at let's say level 365 and infuse that straight into an item at level 385. All right, so now that the leveling was done in the two days before the raid, let's get into the raid itself. Wrath of the Machine on day one. Yeah, minimum. it's 370. Oh, how would you guys 360 oh, no. was the minimum? Well, you're, I'm, uh, you're, you you're, oh, no. you're gonna have I a hard know. time, Reb. We can't Where's have six people in Wretched Eye. There it is. It just now popped up for me. It's 370 light, by the way, boys. 370? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I'm <perfect. you. laughs> yeah. Dude, dude really for the you. default ship, dude. All right, let's go. Let's go. Get it, boys. Have Woo. fun. Importantly. The first encounter is traditional as traditional gets to all of these Destiny 1 raids and puts players in a space they were familiar with. That giant server-like entrance, Foundry 113. This is another open area type place like the Court of Oryx, the Hellmouth, and the Vault of Glass's entrance. But Vault of Glass is still the only one where players at random could help out. So it's still unique to that raid. In this encounter, Many pits of sparks are spread throughout with three stations in a triangular arena to dunk the spark into. The goal was to grab four voltage and dunk it into these stations spread throughout. Oh, so you just have to come up? Oh, there's a ball, ball, ball. Let's go, boys! Immune, 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 immune. The only thing that was truly going to stand in your way here was the voltage eaters, which were large yellow bar shanks. If you let them get to a station, they ate all the voltage and you had to start all over. Once all the voltage was eventually dunked for a max charge, players could break Vosik's shield with orbs. And once down, this boss was free to kill. I have another feather. Feather, I have another gold. I'm about to have another gold. Okay. We, we can, can kill, kill him, him right, right now. now. We can kill him right now. Again. Yes, okay, one more, one more, one more. Oh, he, he, that, that's fine, we beat it. We beat it, we beat it, we beat it. Let's go, let's go. Nice. Oh, no, he's still out. Oh, he's still up there. No, it's fine, it's fine. I'll revive him, I'll revive him, I'll revive him. Good damage, good damage, good damage. Pop another tether, another tether, there it is, there it is. I'm on the way, I'm on the way, I'm on the way. New mission, Wrath of the Machine. He teleported. Right. It's opening, it's opening, it's opening. Get top, get top, get top. He, he, he just killed me somehow. Um, uh, I'm waiting on you. I got you, I got you. Up. All right, top. There's like a, there's like a, there's like a platform we got run up. Yeah, because I'll pass this shit. Except, he's not dead. Instead, you're just getting started, and Vosik left the arena to fight another day. You'll notice something with these teams racing, though, and that is that some teams are getting communication for what other teams are doing. You gotta understand, this is the fun for teams racing. It is a race, after all, so knowing intel from others going into encounters is extremely helpful. It's what landed Team Rare Drop World's First King's Fall with the knowledge that Oryx had a final stand. It's whatever you can do to help your team win, and if that means knowing some extra intel from someone in the voice channel, so be it. To my knowledge, Team Redeem was in control of the first part of the race heading into Vosik. They just had to get around the first sort of jumping puzzle with all these hanging obstacles, including the tanks and platforms. They were zooming through this though, and made it all the way to Vosik in only 11 total minutes. Nice, nice. We're about to drop in. Here we go. Yep. All right, we're in. All right. All right, dope. All right, what do we do? Pop sets, pop sets. If you have them. If you have them. One big pop out all the way to the end. All right, he's immune. Vasek was and is still one of the coolest bosses in all of Destiny, with one of the best rooms to fit the encounter. Monitors everywhere in the room, ads dropping from three sides, different cycles based on how much health the boss had remaining of ads. Doors on the left and right. Boss pissed off to see you again. The mechanics were pretty straightforward here though. 
divide the team to three sets of two, take out the adds, and wait for balls to drop from the ceiling. Throw balls at the boss's shield, shoot a monitor when it pops up, and once the shield is down, fire away. The problem now? Hide behind some. Yeah, Alright, okay. that's a white, that's a white. Right. Right. That's, that's, that's one. One. We know what to do, we know what to do. Either that's we throw the balls at the same time or we place them somewhere. Ball. They couldn't figure out how to stay alive after damaging the boss and thought it could have been so many different things. Was it a monitor around the room? Was it glowing SIVA in the room? Was it to stay in the side doors? Actually, that's a pretty good idea. Shoot that, shoot that, shoot that, shoot the lock, shoot the lock, shoot the lock, shoot the lock. Got it, let's go, boys. Alright, get our runs, get our runs. How did you do it? You shoot the lock, you shoot the lock. Shoot the lock, shoot the lock. Once this mechanic was figured out, it was all but over for Vosik. Throw it. Hardcore 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 Yep. All right. Hardcore D's, Hardcore D's. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. There we go. He, he's on. He should teleport here. All right. Yep. Yeah. We got him. We got him. Good job, guys. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Where's the exit? I got the, the exit. Uh, yeah. Can you guys tether? Can you guys tether? I can tether. Tether. If he goes into that base, pick up those bombs and throw them at him. We got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. Shit, okay. boys. Okay, move, move, move. Yep. That's the critical. Keep we going, killing him? Going, Kill him. Going, Kill him now. Keep going, keep going. Yeah! Good job. Boys. Good. Good. I love this fight for a number of reasons, but mostly because it fits what most of the raid will fit, and that is the hero moment. A hero moment in these raids are moments where your team can die, but you could still save the run. Plenty of mechanics, sure, but plenty of room for everyone to become better and better at them. Mechanics where you aren't so dragged down that if one person dies, it might as well be over. Vosik was cleared from the back of the room, but there's so many different ways to take him down to the point where the one phase with shotguns is actually the fastest way to do it. Overall, one of my favorite boss fights in this game and the aesthetic to match all of it. But let's focus back on the race. Now, only 28 minutes into the raid, Team Redeem was so far ahead of everyone with most teams either getting stuck at Vosik or getting stuck with the door mechanic in Vosik. Redeem had to take advantage of this lead. The in-between section had some more platforms and hidden secrets, which we will touch on a bit later, but here's where it got crazy, and the frames dropped hard. The Siege Engine. There's a hole over by the special yeah, there's box. There's a hole. There's a hole. Yeah, guys, there's a lot of cans over here. I'm about to blow them up. Oh, there we go. There we go. I triggered it. I think. I don't know. What, what'd, you do? what'd you do? What'd you do? Alright, boys. I just went up to the right now. Alright. We didn't go close enough. That's all. Alright. This encounter may be the most unique encounter Destiny raids have ever seen to this point, and for good reason. The encounter which would tank your frames when you first walked in had this giant Mad Max-like car and tons of devil splicers around the arena. The encounter had you shooting pieces of the tank off and having the engine slow down for a bit by, well, shooting at it and boarding it. Yeah, I'm not going to question the logic of it, just, just go with it. Once you boarded the ride, it was all smooth That's sick. That was the part. Baboon! Uh, you got Baboon. Baboon, Baboon. I'm gonna come in on a black screen. Here was a pivotal moment in this world's first race. Maybe the moment that swung the race in Redeem's favor to this point. A disconnect. A Baboon error which put Flesh Crunch behind the siege engine when he reconnected. Hold on to where Flesh Crunch is for a moment, while we focus on the rest of the team. So, after Flesh DC'd from the raid, everyone else pushed forward and started killing adds. Finding that the adds dropped parts on the ground, an engine block, a drive shaft, and the warhead. Once you powered through the adds, the slowing mines, the ships shooting at you, and the holes in the ground, there was two final obstacles in their way. The first and the one that Flesh Crunch discovered after the disconnect, which was so vital in the run, a captain on the top of the ride that had to be killed in order to open up the ramps to climb onto the ship. This was so important because Flesh ended up behind him and was already on the ship while the rest of his team was grabbing parts, so he saw the captain almost immediately. The second challenge, where to put the parts on the ride. 
Redeem wiped twice here trying to find where to place the parts and discovered that the front left was for the drive shaft, the middle was for the warhead, and the back right was for the engine block. Once the siege engine was repaired, it was time to bask in the glory of it and run over all the remaining enemies and bust down another wall to victory. There you go, boys. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, boys. All right, go. Back for a rubber. I'll take Good it. Good fucking teamwork. So going back to that whole trailer thing, players actually knew that they had to jump off the siege engine at the end of this encounter because of the trailer. But damn, if this wasn't one of the coolest encounters overall, with a final send off of the ship falling down into the water. Redeem was on to the next section in only 50 minutes, well ahead of everybody else at the time. But the next encounter is where things would start to change. In the meantime, while we're getting to that next encounter, we must go through the mystery room. Which for now had two different possibilities. Either a bunch of enemies to clear, or... Randall the Perfected Vandal. Randall the Perfected... Who the f*** is this? Whoa! What? I don't remember seeing this guy. What? What guy? Let me see him. It's Randall the Vandal. <gasps> no! It's Randall the f***ing Vandal! Okay, I, I like this. I didn't get sh This was an extremely rare encounter to run into Randall, but if you did, just get ready to waste all your ammo. Randall the Vandal is an easter egg which we will definitely be getting into in a different video, but what a cool easter egg to throw into this raid. Anyways, after clearing the room, the lights came on and you were to escape this giant Rasputin looking SIVA room and down into the Alienware computer tower and onto the Dance Dance Revolution platforms and down into the next room. Axis Phase 1. Stop it. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that was a good one. Let's go. Perfection complex. Who are you? Boss. Who the f do you think you are? Oh, that's. This is Final Boss, I think. No, it's, let's go. Yo, yeah, it's, uh. This is one of the Iron see. Lords, boys. I'm just looking around for stuff, so start looking around. A dark and SIVA filled room was to be another true test for the teams racing here. The big struggle with this encounter was really the captains on the sides and knowing where to throw the charges. The room held the captain in the middle, and one on each side which would spawn yellow bard with a cannon in hand. Once you killed the captain of each element, it was all about finding your matching servitor and killing it with the scorch cannon. Once killed, they dropped a bomb, like the Vosik bombs to throw, but you had to kill the charges on the side of this weird captain thing in the middle. The first time around it was two charges, the second round was three charges, and then the third, they just decided to hit you with seven charges to take it out. Third round is where most teams would die, and especially on day one, for the first time, since they were likely to not be coordinated with servitors, and they were likely to just not be coordinated to do multiple rounds of killing servitors. This is where Tier 1 really started catching up to Redeem after a long battle that Tier 1 suffered at the Siege Engine. Back left. I got it. Okay. Anyone can get it. Anyone can no, get no, it. We're, we're fine. We're fine. Hurry, hurry. Alright, we got it. Oh my god. Oh my god, my stomach! Oh my balls! <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, that was thick. Wait, is there a test? Redeem was able to clear Axis Phase 1 in about 27 minutes, with Tier 1 clearing it in about 40 minutes. Right there, right there, right there. You see it right there? It's right there. Yes. No, he didn't. He's dead. We got it. We got it. Yo, there was a pet over the server spawn. There was not one at the same spawn. No, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah, I'm get all two. Oh no, he's already got it. I got one. Is that all of them? Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay. All right. What next? All right. Something's happened. I can't yeah, do damage. Okay. Die. Let's right. go, boys. Let's go, baby. However, the real meat of the difficulty in the raid was just getting started, as Tier One was catching up to Redeem, with the other teams not even close to these two. Yeah, there's 100% electricity under it. I wonder. If... Yeah, I'm with you, Ben. I, I don't I'm know going why I'm behind it, but oh, I just nope. am. Nope. 
Well, Gunny, just stay back there. If we, if we cheese it, we cheese it. It's a siege engine. Oh, Gunny. Gunny, <laughs> Gunny gonna be the hero, dude. Yep, 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 yep. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. There you go. Right there. Where are we right. going? I got mine. We're good. We got all three. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good hit. Nice. He's nice weak. Job. He's weak. Some, yeah, something else is happening. We're not. Tier 1 prepped harder than any other team to be ready for this moment, and Redeem coming off a loss from the last world's first hunt was hungry as ever for that first place belt. So here it begins. What a lot of people would call one of, if not the best designed raid encounter in all of Destiny, Axis Phase 2. The room was now empty and silent, with only a single victory chest in the middle. But one thing stood out, a red marker on the map. That captain thing in the middle was still alive. Meet Axis. His body. Oh. Yo, Stay in the middle. Oh, oh yeah, he's crawling. Cool. New boss. Should we just wipe? We're all dead. Yeah, yeah, wipe. Get, get yeah, wipe, 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 wipe. Like hurry up, hurry, hurry up. Need. Stop shooting, just wipe. I'm bobbing a three and quarters, dude. I got three to four ghost shells. Alright, this is it, boys. Yeah. Can we go Let's up there? Back. Oh, I just shot his chest. Okay. Okay, oh, there we okay. go. Okay, back up, back up, Vinny. Everyone oh, back up shit. a bit. All right. Oh, oh there it is. There we go. Holy! Oh, oh, oh okay. We still we keep fighting. I, I just maybe. maybe. Oh, shoot oh, 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 God! Why? Wait, we got. <laughs> There's two dead still. I just shot him. Oh my God! Okay, got we got like new mission. Right. I didn't get a shell. More of the machine defeat Axis. Axis. Well, his chest is glowing. Oh, guys, back left. Well, mother why? Oh, he's. Well, his chest is Axis Archon Prime. Oh my God! Fucking spider tank! I hate spiders. Oh my God! It is. It's Gigas. This boss is a spider tank with a captain's body. Axis is, for all purposes, the most SIVA-infused enemy in the game. Axis was the leader of the faction of Devil Splicers, which hoarded the most SIVA, and the captain which was about to get sauced by every team racing. But who would win this final sprint? Let's quickly break down the encounter. Same as the encounter before to start with the captains and servitors, but the big change was now that Axis teleported around the arena, blasting you with a SIVA weapon, and Axis empowered three guardians in the fight. Teams thought that the platforms at the back were the strategy to kill him. Where am I looking? We should all get on one. We should all get on one. Oh, I see him, I see him, yeah. All of us on one. Get on one. That's my There's four of them. Please, I get on. A rubber. I, there's no one for me. I have it. I have it. Oh, did we shoot, shoot him now? No, no, he's still immune, still immune. But that was not it. Then they thought that only empowered people could break the shield. But that wasn't it either. Then it was found that bombs were the way to break the shield. Throw the bomb at him. Oh, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, that's that's how we do it. Let's go. Yes, at him! Go! There we go. Deep yes. Oh, wait, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Sutter, Sutter, Sutter. Can we DPS? We can use actually the cannons. Yo, DPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DPS here. Oh, no. Where is he? It's activated. Get back. Get back. Under the Zords. Under the Zords. Oh no. They're gone. They're not there. They just. Okay. How do we try shooting them? Try shooting them. No. We got like no damage. But not enough damage was done, and those platforms at the back were gone. The key to damage was accidentally discovered by Modern Tryhard. All right. Right side. Oh, stun him. You press. Well, you jump on top of it? Yeah. You there jump on go. top of them. All right, let's go. Shoot it. Now shoot them. Quickly, guys. We, we have to do yeah. this here. Oh, yeah. The going to figure this out soon. Modern jumped on Axis's back for the stun with the empowered buff, which allowed for Axis to be in place for a time until he teleported for another stun. The key to this is that every single empowered buff will rotate, so everybody needs to be ready for a stun on each side. One empowered player must be on the left side, with one in the middle and one on the right. So if I didn't have the buff on left, and it rotates to me after a teammate stuns him in the middle, then I get to call out empowered left and be ready to stun. If you're not empowered, then this will happen. 
I'm turning off this screen. Alright, right, teleported. Don't shoot. Alright, right right, middle, 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 middle. Don't middle. shoot. Middle. Don't shoot. Go, 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 go. Don't shoot at him, guys. I can't get it. I don't have it. Because you guys shot at him. Alright. You guys <laughs> shot at him, yeah. The back platforms were used as safety from the white mechanic Axis had, so you could have a total of five times for damage, but four was probably the most it was going to take. The key to max damage on day one was to use the cannons and hold the trigger for more burst damage on them. So many wipes and fails. So many times both teams came close to each other at the end of this race, but only one team could grab the finale. Went away, oh my god. Wipe. All right, yeah. no, no, no. This one. Right, that's, that's two phases. Yeah, that's two phases, yeah, let's go. Wipe, yeah, pick ammo. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Where's, where's he going? He's metal, metal, metal. He's metal. Whoever's he's metal. He's in mid, he's in mid. Damn. 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 Hold eggs. You have to hold eggs. I didn't. A, Someone yeah, shot him. Back. Wipe, wipe. Why did he shoot him? Oh, oh, dude. Oh, we took too long. This one's bad. Yeah. Just wipe, yeah, just wipe, wipe. Took too long. Somebody up really right. bad, dude. Okay, I'm in power. Wait. So okay, there we go. Yeah. He's going right. He's going right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get up on him, man. All right. No, who is it powered on the right? Who is Yeah, that's what I was saying. We need to put one person on. I was going back mid, yes. Just don't jump the gun and shoot him, guys. Let's go. We've got this. We've got it. We've got it. We've got it. We've got it. Focus. 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 We've got this shit. We've got this shit. Let's see. Where's the Yeah, shoot him. See, you got that. You cannot have to stay in the same spot, man. You cannot move. Finally, after a back and forth battle for the ages, one team came out on top. I'm not telling right. left. Move, are you? Yes. Yes. Go, 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 go. You can do damage. You can do damage. 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 Damage him. Damage him. It's still density. Shoot face. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Shoot his face. Shoot his face. Come on. 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 Yes. Wait. Go. Let's go, dude! Let's go! Let's go, dude! Oh my god! I've never been more proud. Let's go! 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 Let
bad because of how fast it was cleared. But that couldn't be further from the truth. That's like considering Crota to be a better raid because it took longer. Makes no sense to me. The other piece of controversy was laid down in the hard mode raid, which changed up a few things like Vossix monitors now having more health and taking more damage, and only being one of three large monitors instead of all the options of small monitors, to having to slide in doors on Vossix, enemy health and no revives being allowed, six charges dropping per throw on Vossix shield, the Siege Engine having a spider tank to kill now too, Axis Phase 1 having these turrets would shoot you and OH MY GOD GET AWAY FROM ME KID! and Axis taking more balls to break the shield and having more health. Let's back it up to the controversy though. Right there, Siege Engine. This is what hard mode became synonymous for as the world's first hard mode speedrun to first place, which Redeem was in the lead for, was crushed by one thing happening. Hunter's G horn, since Hunter's are a little scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that doesn't make any sense, because we have less ammo with G horn. I mean, I guess what the armor part does. I'm just reading this spec. I mean, it's up to you. What do you guys want to do? I can either steer heat. Wait, we have two less G horn than you guys are going to have, so. I mean, I'm down for whatever, though. I feel like Razor is gonna be better here, though, because it's gonna stun the captain. Dark Drinker, you're just gonna be f***ing at him for like a couple seconds. I still think G-Horn does. I'm gonna keep G-Horn for now, see how it works. I don't even have Razor on me. I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get, like, baked. What? No! No! Dude, dude. Dude. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. How? Dude, I pushed you far forward. Oh, oh, no. Are you kidding me? Oh, what? what? Are you kidding me, Bungie? Dude. Oh, there goes World's First. A bug which was a part of the raid where if you went ahead of the ship before it reached the end and fell off would wipe your whole team since the game thought you were in a kill zone for some reason and hadn't loaded the next portions of the raid. This right here is what garnered the attention of people who focused on the hard mode raid and what would crush Redeem into third place on hard mode instead of first place, which was won by Clan... I don't know how to pronounce this. Die Busfar. I... God, I hope I said that right. With the Legend himself clan led by Slayer Ridge coming in second place. A bug which decided the world's first hard mode race. I pray that a bug doesn't decide a world's first ever again, but we will have to see. Overall, Hard mode was a blast with the light level cap now being 400 on it and most teams going in at 385 with the world's first race teams going in at about 400. Hard mode came with some serious loot though, and matter of fact, normal mode did too, with some great systems in place that made the loot refreshing, farmable, and intrinsic. The first encounter had a normal chest at the end with exotics able to be had. Then a secret chest up on the left side of the first jumping puzzle with hidden Siva nanites spread throughout. Vasik had the shotgun, Quantoplasm, a nice high impact high range shotgun with a couple of intrinsic perks. Number 1. Whirlwind's Curse, which is actually on all of the weapons, did bonus damage to Fallen and number 2. Battle Runner slash Running Interference. Battle Runner gave you more sprint speed after getting a kill, but Running Interference worked to give you armor when Battle Runner was active. This right here is something that this raid did on every single weapon, and to my knowledge, no other raid has ever done this. Take a normal perk that's in the game and double down on it for the raid weapons, like Ether Nova, the fusion rifle from this raid which came with Army of One which gave reduced grenade and melee cooldown on unassisted kills, and 2 for 1, which doubled the effectiveness of Army of One. Once again, I want to stress how great this idea is for raid weapons. Give the players a reason to do the raid without completely breaking the game like in Vault of Glass by making the weapons have no competition. Vosik also had normal mode boots which came with a perk in your element, which gave you increased agility while holding the cannons. 
being something very important for challenges that we will touch on later. Vosik also had some new additions to hard mode loot, which included the sidearm Zeal Vector, which had reactive reload, or as we know it now in Destiny 2, Kill Clip, where after a kill and reload, you were given increased damage. But part two of the perk was Quick Reaction, which gave speed during reactive reload. Hard Mode also dropped the fan favorite, High Impact Sniper, Ex Machina, which had the perk Spray and Play to reload the magazine fast when it was empty, and Part 2, the perk which gave it more ammo in the mag if you reloaded with Spray and Play. One thing Vosik had this whole time in Normal Mode and Hard Mode was something from the previous encounter too, Siva Key Fragments. Siva key fragments are materials used to reroll perks from Wrath of the Machine weapons and armor. Ten of these can also be consumed to create a Siva cache key, which opens Siva caches in the Wrath of the Machine raid for another shot at loot or just materials like strange coins and motes of light. This system is exactly what is needed going forward in raids, and with the new Prophecy Dungeon and old Destiny 2 raids allowing for farmable loot, it seems like Bungie is finally pulling out of their old playbook. Now, onto the next set of rooms to the Siege Engine, where there was not one, but two exotic chests, and at the Siege Engine is really where we had our best armor piece in the game, Gauntlets, which drop with the perk Scavenger's Boon, which were like ruined wings on steroids and dropped more heavy ammo from fallen enemies dying. Which basically meant heavy ammo everywhere at once, or none at all, for what felt like years. Either way, this was widely considered the best armor piece from this raid, and with the key fragments to re-roll, it meant min-maxing as best as you could. This encounter also had the normal mode rocket Sound and Fury, which shared the same perks as the sniper Ex Machina for a big magazine of ammo. And we had the chest piece, which had the perk Bomb Disposal Shield, so you took half damage while carrying a charge. Once again, making challenges we will touch on later that much more doable. Hard mode Siege Engine also came with the machine gun IF Materia which came with triple tap, so every third bullet headshot returned a shot to the magazine, and the second perk on here, which was called triple double, so every time triple tap activated, a second bullet was returned too. Now there was another chest to scavenge in the pipes, and absolutely nothing at all in this giant room. Nope. Nope. Nothing. Access Phase 1 had the Artifact and Ghost, which I guess both look cool, but were just stat boosters, mostly. Access Phase 2 had the real remaining meat with the Auto Rifle, which came with Focus Fire, so it could slow down bullets for high impact shots, and once again, it had a Part 2, which added Firefly to explode heads on Focus Fire headshot kills. The next weapon is really a staple of this raid, and was used widely by many. The Chaos Dogma which was a scout rifle high impact with extended mag for more ammo, triple tap, and yes, that part two that was on IF Materia, triple double, which basically added double triple tap. So this thing could fire for a very long time. The final piece for normal mode was a helmet which had the perk Ellis Skinny Immunity. So picking up an orb made Fallen do less damage. Pretty solid, but not as good as the rest of the gear. Hard Mode introduced the Steel Medulla, a pulse rifle with high impact and full auto so you could hold the trigger, and Sign of Four, which was the part two of the perk, basically landing three bursts made the fourth burst do extra damage. Finally, the last weapon from the raid was the Hand Cannon, which I can remember everyone being hyped about, and it was good, just, just not great. Fever and Remedy which had reactive reload, and the part two was increased agility while reactive reload was active. There was a couple more neat rewards, like the Axis Core, which could be turned in for Glimmer and Vanguard Reputation, the Nano Phoenix, which was an incredibly rare and beautiful ship, an Ice and Fire token, so you could open up the other side of the Iron Temple and get a SIVA cluster on the top, the class items, which, you know, just look, look pretty cool, the Shader, and of course, the guaranteed perfected ornament to trick out your hard mode gear. There was some extras, like having a full set of armor to unlock the shaders, as well as the emblem for completion. But wait, there's...
We're forgetting one important weapon. The exotic quest. The weapon that perfected Destiny, or in this case, put Destiny into its prime. Outbreak Prime. A weapon made up of SIVA and stashed away deep into the raid, which took the Destiny community months to figure out the secret. I have a whole video dedicated to this weapon and its legacy already, but this one started with a bug spread through the whole community, much like, well, I won't say it for fear of... And then codes gathered to a website called Owl Sector, which then housed an ARG puzzle for the community to solve. This puzzle shot out a map of that giant Rasputin server room with numbers on the sides so you knew which canister corresponded to which code. But to even get started, the community had to find monitors around the raid from Vasek, on the way to Siege Engine, underneath the Siege Engine, and then into the binary code reading room and coordinate a path to open the chest which guaranteed an exotic, an emblem, and the second to last monitor. Open. Open! Come on, baby. Open. Do it. I know you want it. And yes. Yes. Oh! Yes. It's opening! It's opening! Yep. It's, open. Oh. it's open! It's open! Yes. Look, don't don't touch anything, don't touch anything. It's in there. I think this is the entrance. Yeah, it's right in there. Right. We're letting Brandon open, turn on this monitor. Woo! Yeah, right, like I can get in there, come on. He just falls right down. Okay, go. Get in there, turn that thing on. Nope. Oh, there it is! There it is. There it is. It's on! The final of which monitors was underneath Axis after you beat him, and unlocked all the lasers that were normally blocking the path so players could open the chest and start their puzzles. Fun fact, this is where Team Prime Guard actually changed their names to Math Class because of the math that Datto, Leopard, Watts, and the crew did to solve the Outbreak Prime puzzle and get one of the best exotic primaries in the game and one that would return triumphant in Destiny 2. Outbreak was to be the gold standard of exotic quests and pushed the narrative of what first-person shooters could truly be by a mile, and added to the legacy of this raid further by having an exotic quest that required some serious commitment by the community. Speaking of commitment, let's talk about Challenge Mode and Age of Triumph. Face them once more. Teach them fear. The final update which not only made all the old raids have high power loot, but also gave challenges and triumphs to all the record books in the game. The challenges netted ornaments for the gear, as well as adept primary weapons for Arc, Solar, and Void variants. It also netted some sweet emblems and shaders too. For Wrath, the challenges were in Vosik to use all the locked doors, but destroy the locks with bombs instead of your weapons, that dropped during the DPS phase of Vosik. Which sounds fun, but I would argue that this challenge was actually weak because it made you kill Vosik in three phases to use all the bombs to destroy all the locks on the doors slowing players down who were looking for a challenge, and kind of counterproductive. The next challenge was the Siege Engine, which... Wait, actually there's no challenge here, other than a record book triumph for finishing it fast, but the only remaining challenge was not Axis Phase 1, but Axis Phase 2, which utilized a mechanic we haven't even discussed yet, but has been present since the beginning of the raid, and that is the Empowered Plates. When Axis is teleporting for damage, players will notice that there's glowing red plates on all three sides of the room. If you are empowered and you see a red plate, this will give you a prompt to slam that plate. And this will empower everyone with a full supercharge if done in time, and is a massive asset and a perfect optional mechanic for every part of this encounter. Except challenge mode which made you utilize them, so... I guess those were really just saved for challenge mode the whole time. 
The key was to stand in the middle of where Axis would teleport and where the plate was to be for the empowered buff. I remember on my own day one raid arguing with a teammate about those plates and if they meant anything for so long that a friend of mine fell asleep while we were still game planning. I seriously love this mechanic though as it gives players an option to bake the boss with supers like Atheon had with Time's Vengeance, and it lets players who do the raid on a weekly basis to have a tool to speed it up and maximize the efficiency. And if people aren't as ready for it, they can slowly learn and eventually figure out this mechanic and utilize it to their advantage. I think all raids could take notes more from optional mechanics going forward that benefit players but I could see where this could also confuse a lot of the people raiding, just like my friend who fell asleep. So those were the challenges Bungie put in for this raid, and overall I would call it a success, with Axis maybe being the hardest challenge Bungie has ever put into the game, since it required every single player to coordinate and be on top of everything. Something not common to Destiny, which always had hero moments where some players could carry the weight of the team. Here's something interesting I want to briefly touch on though, but that I'm saving for a massive video down the line, and that is Modern Day Wrath of the Machine. Which has seen some insane accomplishments like Solo Axis, Yes! Oh my god, yes! 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 <laughs> Solo Siege Engine? Oh my god! We did it! We did it! Oh my god! We did it! No way! Oh my god! And as of the beginning of 2020, Solo Vosik, which nobody thought was possible to get enough damage to kill the boss. But one player spent years on this very challenge. I think the glory of this raid is in the fact that people still run it every week to this day. Teams are still speedrunning it to this day. And people are always looking for creative new ways to dunk on this raid. The Destiny community is capable of some insane challenges, but this raid giving players freedom to tackle challenges is what makes it special. So. Now let me give my final critique on this raid. I think this raid is the best raid that Destiny 1 has to offer. It's fast paced, requires in your face gameplay like swords and shotguns to be the most efficient, has a large skill gap that any player can jump into and become better at on multiple playthroughs, lets the player experiment in a multitude of ways. Like, for example, it was only brought to my attention not too long ago that swords are not the best option for axis damage like I thought for a long time. 
but instead cluster bomb rockets and thermite grenades for Titan with melting point, and that's because Axis crit points are on every single leg, so a cluster bomb rocket will hit all of them at once. Same with the well-placed thermite grenade. There's also many ways to approach Vosik too, like the sniper or rocket bake on him, or you can just bait out a slam and stun him with final round shotguns for extra damage and a one phase kill. One thing I like about a lot of these raids in Destiny 1 is that one phases aren't easy either, like I find most to be in Destiny 2, and they require a lot of thought, a lot of coordination to pull off, but they're still possible, and I think I like that a lot. Siege Engine can have players doing some wild stuff too, like bringing the chest to the beginning, having players get on the ship early, and having players hyperspeed to the ship, and more. I mean, who knows what's out there? I think Axis speaks for himself with how great the fight truly is. I think no raid loot can really compare to Vault of Glass, but this raid is really what we're looking for. It's just a bit better than the rest of the game without being game-breaking, and the gear, of course, looks tremendous and has some standout perks. The bottom line of this raid is that it involves the whole team, and no job is boring compared to another. There's no stand on plates and wait for one teammate to carry. There's never a dull moment. The raid is about in your face, fast combat, and it delivered on every bit of hype it was expected to generate. Overall, this to me is the raid that perfected Destiny, tied it up nicely in a bow, and completed the full package of what the game had to offer. I think it's also the only raid that if it came back, I'd be just as excited to hop back into. But we're gonna have to wait for years for that dream to come true, and I cannot wait for what Beyond Light has to offer for us. The new raid I hope delivers in every way and blows me out of the water. So let me leave this question for you. What was your favorite raid from Destiny 1? Also, should I make a video ranking the raids now that we've gone through all of them? Even if you haven't played the raids, which out of the videos would you be the most excited to play? Drop me a comment here or talk to me on my Twitch channel at EvanF1997. Anyways, if you did enjoy this video, a like would be greatly appreciated as well as a subscription. I'd like to remind all of you that my nostalgic merch is still up for orders if you haven't bought it yet, considering Axis is displayed on the shirt too. I figured this might be a good time to bring it up. Anyways, thanks to Ridge for sponsoring this video, and I will see you next time, everyone. Have a great day. Mm. Not a good time to be stuck. Okay, got uh, it. what? Later, dude! this up because no good is always putting this pressure on me, dude. Oh, Wait, that's it? There's no more than this. This is why he has an F in his name. <laughs> no! There's three houses. Three, 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 three. Oh, okay. Well, we keep fighting. Three, three, three. Maybe. Oh, 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 God. Why? Wait, God. we got <laughs> There's two dead still. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you're dying when you're already on it. <laughs> you changed that. <laughs> Try teabagging it. I no, I tried teabagging it and I ended up shy stepping. Oh, 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 o